Are in-helmet communications going to stop Michigan from cheating and stealing signs? Let's talk about it. So I was at Big Ten Media Days this week, and if you don't believe me, there I am with my pass. I'm there in the stadium. I'm on TV asking a question to the Greg Schiano. If you know me, you know I'm a Rutgers fan in addition to being an Ohio State fan and uh, me in front of the big sign there. I think that was made out of PVC pipe possibly and then some other stuff around it. Anyway, that's not important, but I was at Big Ten Media Days this week and it was a lot of fun, a lot of good information. Obviously, every coach was there, players were there, many different questions were asked, in particular to some of the coaches. They were asked about the in-helmet communications. Deshaun Foster was asked a lot about it because of Eric Bieniemy coming in, coming to the to UCLA, coming from the NFL. Uh, James Franklin, Ryan Day, Sharon Moore, all these guys were asked about it. Now, some of it was in regard to the NFL experience, whether they had been in the NFL or they have guys in their staff who had been in the NFL and how that's going to look, if they like it or don't like it. And the overwhelming sentiment was, we like this. This is something that needs to happen. Even Kirk Ferentz, right? The most old school of old school. Kirk Ferentz said, I'm glad college football has caught up to high school football in regards to the iPads and stuff like that. So that was interesting. But one of the most interesting answers was from James Franklin because not only were guys asked about the in-helmet communications in regard to the NFL, but they were also asked about the in-helmet communications in regards to sign stealing. Now, there were not a ton of questions outright about would this stop Michigan from cheating from C- from cheating and stealing signs. However, there were t- uh, questions asked about would this stop stealing signs and James Franklin was one of the only coaches that was willing to go in depth a little bit more than most other coaches and Tom Orr posted this on Twitter I unfortunately was not actually at that one because voice college football doesn't have a Penn State channel so I was focusing more on the channels that the voice college football has but thanks to Tom Orr he got this video if you want to check out what the tweet is go check out Tom Orr over there on Twitter want to make sure we give proper credit all right let's watch this video from James Franklin discussing the sign stealing operation and if in helmet communications would stop that i don't think it's as significant as people think i think the whole the whole reason that this got changed is the whole sign stealing deal i think that was a big reason why this rule got changed and it doesn't really help that i think a lot of people that passed the rule think it did if you're running a no huddle offense and you can talk to the quarterback how do you get the information to the wideouts that are 53 yards apart from each other? You're still going to have to signal. So um, there may be more people that huddle than have in the past to avoid people stealing signs, but it doesn't really resolve that. Uh, for us, either way, uh, we're happy with it. Uh, there are some challenges that you have on special teams because you can only have one guy on the field at once with it. And on special teams, you got a blend of people on the field. Uh, and you could have some changes throughout the game where – you end up with two players on the field at the same time. So you got to be strategic about that. You got to be you know, careful. Um, but I think it's a good rule change. I'm glad it happened. But I think the whole reason the rule got changed is because of the sign stealing whole discussion. And I don't really feel like that resolves that whatsoever. I think it's funny the way he says sign stealing. The sign stealing puts a lot emphasis on it there and he didn't say scandal or anything like that at least i don't think he did there the second part but anyway we do want to make sure we actually acknowledge what did michigan do that was actually against the rules the part that michigan did that was against the rules don't ask a michigan fan this they'll tell you nothing they did was against the rules but what michigan did i shouldn't say all michigan fans most michigan fans what Michigan did is they sent people to games, paid for their tickets, whether it was Carter Stallions, the, uh, the Michigan, some kind of booster, whatever it was, with intent for Michigan to get video surveillance of another team's sidelines. So that way they could know what kind of signs, who was giving the signs, things like that on game day. And this not didn't just happen in the Big Ten, happened other places in the letter that Tony Petiti put out out there they talked about how they have confirmed data or whatever it is camera angles that this did in fact happen with a number of games and they have proof to say that that actually indeed 
did happen. And so that's what they actually got in trouble for was sending people to games, maybe not staff members, but sending people to games in order to get video surveillance to give back to Michigan so they could use to pre-scout a team more than what other teams have, which is obviously an unfair advantage. Now, Stealing signs is not against the rules, right? I mean, this is something that has been going on in college football for a long time. Brent Venables was doing it in 2020. Ryan Day did a good job of combating that. And that was one of the reasons why Ohio State was able to defeat Clemson in 2020. Uh, for, for them, that was huge. However, when somebody isn't just stealing signs in the moment of that game and they're actually getting information ahead of time, they aren't learning the signs as the game go. And even if you try to change your signs maybe they've seen it anyway i don't want to get into the whole semantics of it but stealing signs itself is not wrong it's something that's actually very smart to do so kudos to anybody who who do, who does that the right way it was the gaining of information and an advantage that was against the rules that michigan actually broke those rules anyway I do think James Franklin is exaggerating here a little bit because he's talking about, well, in helmet communication only gives the play call to one player and that player still has to communicate to the other players or your sideline still has to communicate to those other players. Well, signs don't need to be complex with cartoon characters and signs on the sidelines. I mean, the QB is, is able to talk to the team. They don't necessarily have to huddle up every single time he can yell to the other team. He can talk to them, uh, you know, whatever waggle waggle, some of that stuff you hear the quarterbacks say on NFL and stuff. But uh, I mean, you see it all the time, right? You see NFL teams communicate to each other plays and audibles without a, uh, with, without a huddle. And so, Yes, you do still need to communicate with the other players, and there probably does need to be some kind of signaling to make that happen, but the signs you're giving aren't exactly to that same extent, and if anything, the QB being able to signal now to other players makes this more complex, right? Because you don't know the source of the sign every single time. You don't know, is the sign coming from this guy on the sidelines? Is it coming from the quarterback? You know, are they huddling? Are they not huddling? That kind of stuff that does make it rather difficult. And I think it makes huddling actually way easier for your team if you want to do it. And Ryan Day actually pointed out there are some advantages to huddling. So I would not be surprised if Ohio State does huddle more this year. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video. But essentially what he said is you can kind of mask your formation a little bit better. Uh, you know, say with Xavier Johnson, you put him out there before people say, oh, that's a wide receiver. Uh, you put him in the huddle and he comes out and, he run, and you're in shotgun and he's the running back next to the quarterback. Well, you've planned for X number of wide receivers, but now you have a running back back there. Anyway, that was kind of Ryan Day's whole gist of it. But on defense, I would say kind of, right? Okay, so the offense dictates how fast things go. So the offense, if they huddle, makes it so the defense can huddle. And if the defense is huddling, it's the same with the offense. They get the play call in, the linebacker, safety, whoever it is, communicates to the rest of the team. They go out, they make that uh, they, they make that formation, get ready to do that play. If a defense cannot huddle, they will need to use signs in some form or fashion, whether that be signs from the linebacker. Do you know who has the in-helmet communication to be able on offense? You know it's most likely the quarterback. I mean, that's it's almost a guarantee. But on defense, do you know it's the Mike linebacker? Do you know if it's the strong safety? Do you know if it's the Will linebacker? Who knows? You may not have all that information readily, readily available every single time. So that does make it a little bit more complex there. Uh, but if you're running things slow enough, if you have enough time and you're running things slow enough and you pick up on those things, you would be able to steal signs, which this was one of the secrets to how Michigan was able to steal signs, steal signals and call the right play because they ran a slow offense. And that's, I mean, that's not debatable. They ran a slow offense for the past three years and it got slower and slower each year. Take 2019, for example, okay? Michigan had a good team 2019. It's not like they were bad. It's not like they were, you know, struggling as much as they were in 2020, but their seconds per play on offense, seconds per play, the amount of time it took per play, 58th. This, this is 24.2 nine seconds all right this isn't saying the actual play this is saying the time the seconds in between each play 24.9 
seconds. This was 58th in the country. Unfortunately, in 2020, the uh, stat was not, you know, recorded or held, whatever, you know, it just says they, they didn't track it in 2020. In 2021, Michigan jumped to 94th, 26.8 seconds per play. In 2022, 122nd, 28.9 seconds per play. That's a jump of over, or not over, that's a jump of two seconds. And then in 2023, 131st. I mean, this is where you're getting into like Air Force, Army territory, right? 131st, 30.9 seconds per play. And so you see Michigan getting slower and slower and slower because they're perfecting their craft. If we're going to steal the signs and we're going to, uh, which again, stealing signs in itself is not against the rules, but we're going to steal the signs, make sure we have the perfect play call for it, make sure that we communicate that to everybody else. So it takes time to make that happen, right? If you are the offensive team, it takes time in order for you to steal the signs of the defense, communicate it to your players, pick the right play and uh, or communicate the play to your coordinator pick the right play communicate the play to your players right not just your quarterback but you're also having to maybe sing signals in or the quarterback's gonna have to huddle something like that and then get to the line get set make sure everybody is in the right formation so you don't get a penalty for that all right hurry up offenses are just not going to have enough time to be able to make those kind of quick decisions getting the information communicating it to your coordinator even if your coordinator is able to read the signs himself he has too much going on to be able to try and do that but for that coordinator to be able to then get that information pick the right play go to the right person uh, and communicate that it just takes too much time for you to do in a hurry up offense and honestly the more you do that the more time you're giving to the defense to adjust right for them to be able to see what formation you come out in maybe they switch from zone to man who knows something like that could happen so what will actually stop michigan from their cheating process and stealing size well some things have already happened i do think the newer rule makes it more difficult makes it harder to steal signs right like i said it makes it more complex with where are the signs coming from are they actually giving signs are they going to huddle that kind of stuff does make it more complex um the uh, connor stallions he's gone right i mean he he's no longer employed by michigan he's no longer on staff there i mean it would take some a pretty crazy situation for them to have connor stallions working behind the scenes still hiring people to go to games i mean uh, like this would be pretty crazy. They're, they're still giving him the the all twenty two footage, which he was able to get some signs from that. If you watch the all twenty two footage, there there is some signaling in that. Now, not enough for you to get everything by itself, but there would be some in there that you would be able to get information from. And so, I mean, th- there would have to be some crazy back channeling behind the scenes stuff in order for them to have Connor Stallion still working on this stuff, even if he's not on the Michigan payroll. But really at the end of the day here, what is going to stop things like this, not just Michigan, but things like this happening in the future. And it's that the NCAA needs to take this seriously and deter others by giving Michigan an actual punishment right? They need to actually go to Michigan and say, you are punished for cheating. You are punished for breaking the rules. Doesn't matter the severity. We can argue all day long about how how much this impacted it. Some players say it has a huge impact. Some coaches say, oh, it doesn't have an impact at all, whatever. I mean, we can argue all day long. Doesn't matter the severity, but Michigan needs to actually get a serious punishment here. We're not talking about fine. A fine is not that big of a deal. I mean, these football programs bring in so much money that a fine, who cares? Not really even that big of a deal. So what? The soccer team is not going to get new uniforms. Who cares? Um, Not probation. You can't continue to, they're already on probation. You can't say, oh, well, they weren't on probation yet. No, you can't do that. You can't extend their probation. That's not going to actually do anything because if they have figured out how to not get caught, then they're going to say, oh, we're not going to get caught. Uh, And not scholarship productions. Now, this does make it a little bit more interesting with what the uh the, the legal things that have been decided today with um, with um what's it called nil with the uh, institutions the collectives sorry with collectives having to actually report some of these uh, nil dealings and make them actually true nil dealings and not just hey congratulations you came over to my house here's a million dollars um not saying that happens but you, you catch my drift um 
but actually have scholarship reductions for a team. But these guys, they're also increasing the scholarship limit to 105. So even though Michigan got a scholarship reduction with the recruiting violations of the hamburger and that kind of stuff, which really wasn't because of a hamburger, it was because of lying and not being truthful. But um, but the scholarship reduction, they still have more scholarships than they had with the 85 before, which is just crazy. I mean, there, there has to be something that's actually done here to deter people from cheating, breaking the rules. And the NCAA, they honestly, they've been kind of pushed over a little bit in the past. So it's very possible we see the NCAA say, oh, here's some probation, here's this, that, and the other. But what we're talking about is we're talking about some kind of bowl ban. We're talking about even wins vacated. Who cares? I mean, I talked about this on the Big Ten Huddle before. Like, okay, you vacated the championship for Michigan. That doesn't change that the fans were still there. That doesn't change that they still felt that. Okay, the championship trophy goes away. I mean, Jim Harbaugh is still going to claim he has a national championship. People are still going to talk. I mean, vacating doesn't do anything. No, you have to actually affect the team. You have to actually affect the staff. Even a show cause for Jim Harbaugh. He's never coming back to college football. He got done what he wanted to get done. The man was begging to get out of college football for years, right? And so a show cause to him it really doesn't do anything. The NCAA has to look at this situation and say, we need to actually do something that will deter teams from breaking the rules in the future. Let me know what you think. All right. Do you think that, do you agree with James Franklin? This doesn't do anything. And, you know, teams are still going to be able to steal signs. Teams are still going to be able to, uh, you know, pre video scout video surveillance against teams. Or do you kind of agree with me and, does do a little bit and yeah james franklin has a few points but at the end of the day it's not that much uh i'd love to get your thoughts i know there will be a ton of michigan fans in the comments talking about uh you know cope harder and uh all those things and that's totally fine i really couldn't care less what michigan fans have to say when they go after it like that but Anyway, I don't normally talk about this stuff. I just thought it was really interesting from Big Ten Media Days. I hope you found it interesting as well. I hope it's making you ponder things coming up this season and the game of football, not just, you know, who's going to be the starting quarterback, but actually ponder the X's and O's and how play calls happen, things like that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and respond to you. Um, if you don't have anything interesting to say, I probably won't respond to you. But um, if you're somebody that you do have interesting to say and you have a conversation, I'd love to respond to you. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please do like and subscribe. We do appreciate it.